In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Bach Christos Avtonf, Chenom Ethmi Avtonf, a very blessed season of the resurrection, and we are blessed to continue our Bible study on 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And here we are at the heart of the matter. Why did you write this epistle, St. Paul? Well, he says, It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and such sexual immorality as is not even named among the Gentiles, that a man has his father's wife. And this is a terrible, awful thing to be found in the church because there should be no such sin found in any community, let alone the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, the community of the Christians. And this is our theme for today, purity and purity in the church and purity among our own friendship groups. And honestly, it boils down to we cannot tolerate sin. We cannot tolerate sin. And I think it's often taught and is often the case that we say, love the sinner, not the sin. We ought to have no room, no compassion, no nothing, no leverage when it comes to sin. But we are to be merciful. We ought to be understanding. We ought to make excuses for one another. And we ought to raise one another up. As you can see, the hatred is towards the action but in regards to the person, there is love. And that sounds familiar. That sounds like another person's approach. This person is God. God hates sin. God cannot stand sin because sin separates us from him. Sin is against him. He is life. Sin is death. Sin goes against his very nature. Sin destroys his creation, who he loves. It destroys us. And we ought to hate sin because sin destroys our brothers and our sisters. It destroys me. Sin is my enemy, and sin brings forth death, and death is the enemy of mankind who Christ killed on the cross. Sin is terrible and awful, and we approach this in two ways. The church, on the one hand, will recognize we have a goal of salvation in the church. We are all working together to abide in our Lord Jesus Christ, but when we find one is living a lifestyle of sin and taking others away and it's affecting and hurting the church in a terrible, terrible way, the church will say, this person needs to repent. This person needs salvation, but we can't keep them here. It's kind of like a quarantine. Like right now we're in the season of a pandemic. If someone gets the virus, we say, oh my goodness, we need to remove this person for a time for them to get better. So we remove this person for a certain time and we give them treatment, penance, do these certain things. Let's work on having our mind and our heart to move towards salvation and penance. And when they finally are healed of this, we bring them back to the church. They receive the sacrament of confession, repentance, and finally the, the sacrament of the Eucharist by which they are reconciled with the community. But on the other hand, there is also this idea of purity in our own friendship groups. And it, if I can say this in a very positive way, I need to have friends who are going to lift me up, who are going to bring me closer to God, friends who are going to promote reading of scripture and prayer and worship and spiritual practices, friends who are going to make me more attracted to Christ. And I can see Christ in those friends. Those are the ones who I could choose. Those who St. Paul describes, now I have written to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother who is sexually immoral, covetous, an idolater, reviler, drunkard, extortioner. Now I have been at you with such a person. So there are those who I can say, well, these will not bring me much closer to God. I need to be careful that I don't fall into sin by hanging around these people. Why? Because I'm better than them? No, actually, because I'm far worse than them. Because if I go into this, I already deal with sin. I have my own, I have my own struggles. But if I go with them, oh my goodness, I'm going to fall even more. What is then our approach to these persons? St. Paul describes in Galatians 6, 1, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. I need to think about me for a bit and my own salvation and my own struggle. And I think about them and their own salvation, their own struggle. Because guess what? We're a church. We care about the community and the salvation of all of us in the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. I have to be nice to them. I have to be gentle. I have to be compassionate. I have to be understanding, just like God is to every other person. We need to consider these and we need to pray for them. But at the same time, it doesn't mean I need to be around them. 
I need to be around those who are bringing me to our Lord Jesus Christ. I need to be careful. I can't tolerate sin. If I find people engaged in sin, I pray for these people. I don't judge these people. I don't look down on them, but it doesn't mean I hang out with them. Instead, I should hang around those people I think. These are the ones who are going to bring me closer to God. Does that, ca- does that take some discernment? Yeah. Does that take a little bit of thinking? Yeah. But is that what we are called to do? Yes. Should it be easy? It should be. Is it always easy? It's not always easy. And that is why we ought to pray and seek those good and excellent friendships. That's why if we find a person who is very spiritual, someone who we connect with, we have to hold on to these people. We should really hold on to them because it is through these people that we will find our Lord Jesus Christ. It is through those friendships that we will repent, that a sinner like me can be a saint in the Orthodox Church. To our Lord Jesus Christ belongs all glory and honor with his good Father and the Holy Spirit. And glory be to God forever. Amen.